Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Tell me little cubby all stuffed with fluffies, Winnie the Pooh. Thank God I got through one of these fucking songs. <laughs> you did, you didn't. You got to the, you didn't even get to the end of the chorus. Welcome to a new episode of Still in Present the Movies. Today we are going to see Christopher Robin. A week late, but still, you want to see it? We were out of town last week. Yeah, so, Christopher Robin. So, our history with Winnie the Pooh is basically most people's history at this point. We saw a lot of that Disney stuff. The direct video movies, the TV show. It was, uh, a, oh, occasionally the old, the old stuff, old Winnie the Pooh stuff from the 60s and 70s. However, in 2011, when Winnie the Pooh put out his, his last theatrical film, 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 we were not in presence because, well, Transformers came out that week. Well, Transformers 3 came out the same night. Harry Potter. I thought it was Transformers. I it thought, was Harry I thought, Potter. I think I remember it being Transformers, but I guess it was Harry Potter. It was Harry know. Potter 8. I don't know. It was 2011. A lot of stuff was coming out that we. A lot of stuff was coming out that summer. It's not important. Either way. Our history with the Winnie the Pooh franchise is basically most people's history with it. It's essentially, we, we grew up on a bunch of the Winnie the Pooh stories. These characters are iconic for a reason. They're simple enough that you get latch onto them and everybody, and almost everybody loves them. However, four years ago when it was announced that there would be a live action Winnie the Pooh movie, we like most people were uh, very skeptical of the fact that Disney was just gonna live action up everything. Yeah. And then a couple months later we learned that what the premise of the movie would be. Instead of being a full on live action remake, which could have just simply been what they were what they they're basically doing with the with the Lion King where it's essentially essentially a bunch of CGI stuffed animals running around and with the occasional maybe a kid shows up to play Christopher Robin. Instead, we're basically getting a 20 2010s version of Hook. Yeah, Christopher Robin is all grown up, played by Ewan McGregor. He has a wife and kids, and and he has forgotten about what it's like to be a kid. And that's basically the plot. And honestly, and honestly, that's a fine idea. It's a fine idea for a movie. And then the trailer came out. The trailer came out, and it broke our fucking, and it just broke our fu melted in our fucking hearts. Yeah, we. I showed it to our friend, and he didn't. Not telling him what it was. All I told him was, it's the new Disney movie. And he was like, oh, Ian McGregor, I like him. And then suddenly, oh my god, he's Christopher Robin! It, the fa this movie looks fantastic just simply because of a few things. Number one, Ian McGregor is a really good actor. He, this is his second live-action Disney remake. But they make his first beam. He played Lumiere in the Beauty and the Beast movie, remake last year. He is, we have Haley Atwell coming in to play his wife. We have a bunch of different people coming in to play the voices of the of all of the of all the Winnie the Pooh characters, but one person is the who is who it had to be him. Nobody else could do, jump jump into this. This I dare I fucking dare anybody to come up with a celebrity casting for this character, and that is Jim Cummings as Winnie the Pooh. We've been saying fuck a lot, huh? Yeah. It's not like a, it's not like any kids watch our videos. Anyway. Anyway, yes, Jim Cummings, the man who has played Winnie the Pooh for 30 years. No one else has. For 30 years, plays Winnie the Pooh in this movie. For a while, he wasn't even going to play. He wasn't going to play a Tigger, Chris O'Dowd, from Bridesmaids or Ragnarok. And the IT crowd was going to be playing Tigger, but then the Remember? test audiences did not like him. I kind of want to hear what his interpretation was. I would like to see if it actually was as bad as everyone said it was, was going to be. So then Jim stepped in to play Tigger as well. Yep. And then we got Peter Capaldi as Rabbit and Toby Jones as Owl. Owl. And, and Kristen Anderson Lopez is not returning as Kanga, but I don't know. I guess that's fine. I don't, I haven't actually heard, I didn't actually, we haven't seen the Winnie the Pooh movie from 2011 to know how she did as that. Is that all I know is that her songwriting, that her and her husband co-writing the songs there is what led to the music for Frozen, so I don't care because that music was great. Anyway, but we also have Mark Forrester directing, and he's done Finding Never, and he's known primarily for Finding Neverland. Also the Kite Runner, World War Z, 
Yeah. And, uh, and, a movie, and a movie with Ian McGregor called Stay. Which Chris Stuckman has been kind, kind of led the flat charge for about two years ago. Yeah. Also, interesting fact, this is the first time we are doing a movie that we intended to do for a long time, but Tony Goldmark beat us to the review because his reviews usually take a little bit of turnaround time, whereas ours we can just shoot and release the same night because we're just stitching two pieces together. So it's kind of so good on you, Tony Goldmark, for jumping on this pretty quickly. But even though you're probably never gonna see this video, yeah. But even though you're not gonna see this video, but at the same time, you got you got lucky because we had to go out of town because we went out of town to had to have fun doing something else. Yeah, but. That being said, Christopher Robin, it seems like a good idea for a movie. It seems like it's going to be a heart-wrenching, mostly because we actually have Winnie the, P the Winnie the Pooh in this. And critics have been generally okay with it. It's, a, it's not fantastic, but it's a, like 68%? 69%, I think. <laughs> oh, grow up. This movie tells me I don't have to. But, yeah, we're expecting a, a, to be... In, on the verge of tears for the, with this one. So, is this one going to be a Winnie, or is it just going to be Pooh? I'm sorry. Especially because I stole that joke. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're good to go. Yep. So, uh, we'll see you guys after the jump. Yep. Well, I didn't cry as much as I thought I would. No. But, still tugged at my heartstrings in the right amount. Yep. Wasn't as good as I thought it would be, sadly. However, it was still pretty enjoyable. Yeah, the... So, let's talk about it. Ewan McGregor as Christopher Robin was pretty good. Uh, he pretty much co he pretty much covered everything he needed to be. The acting overall is actually really good. Yeah. The thing is, Christopher Robin didn't have much of a character in the way of character in the original shorts. So, so he was kind of a... Because obviously he was a blank slate. Essentially, A.A. A. Mill needed a character to kind of find a ground the Winnie the Pooh character, so he threw his son in. And there's an entire movie about how, why his son's not too excited about the, was never too excited about that prospect, but that's something for another day. Yeah, yeah, that movie that came out earlier this year, that also had Christopher Robin in the title, but uh, Idol Disney had nothing to do with it. Actually, now they do. Yeah, <laughs> not important. Not, not important, important, but... But oh, but I think he hit the right, Ewan McGregor hit the right beats he needed to for this movie with movie. I mean, he, there was never a moment element where they had to convince him that it was real. He did have that for a bit, but it's nothing you didn't see in the tra already see in the trailer. But still, yeah. Then we had Haley Atwell as his wife. She was a very. She was never in it for very long, but it, but she did. But her and the do and Christopher Robin's daughter both kind of get moments where they're fleshed out, out essentially more. His daughter was played by the girl who plays his daughter is a really great actress. Yeah. for her age. Yeah, I mean, for child acting is kind of hit or miss depending on the, how good uh, you got you get how good the actor is is in comparison and as well as who is directing acting acting I mean on a scale of like Charles Wallace and Wrinkle in Time and I'm and I'm to like Sid in the in Looper I'd say she's a good first Harry Potter movie yeah then we have the voice talents boy oh boy the voice talents Jim Cummings is Pooh, he is Tigger, he's played him, them in all the cinematic movies of all, uh, Winnie the Pooh, both of 30 them in, years. All the, in all the cinematic Winnie the Pooh movies since the 90s, well, Tigger anyway, since the 90s, Pooh, he's, but he's played both of them since the 80s TV show. For 30 years, he's been playing Pooh, Jim Cummings has been playing Pooh. It, it's at this point that he has perfected the voice so much that he uses that voice no matter what, that he uses that voice all the time, whether it be doing like, stuff like this or voicing or doing one of those unusual voice acting things where things where they are like, do this in this voice. He's done. And uh, he's Winnie the Pooh. He is the definite 
basically become the definitive Pooh at this point. At this point, he's done the role longer than Sterling Holloway ever did, even though Sterling Holloway basically is the role, is the voice that Jim Cummings is impersonating to make Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. And, at the, and Vanity Fair said something that was very interesting in the way of voice acting, which is they thought he was gave an Oscar-worthy performance, which I would be all for him getting nominated, the problem is the Academy has been such sticklers about voice acting and motion capture and all these other forms of acting that it's, there's no way it's gonna he's gonna be nominated. Yeah, which is a sad thing, and especially since they just went and crowbarred in popular best popular movie when they could, which raises when, a lot of questions. Which raises a lot of questions. But the main thing being, if you wanted to get Black nominate Black Panther for Best Picture, just fucking nominate Black Panther for Best Picture. Put a warning on this video when you edit it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what else can is there? The score is fantastic. We get so much of the Sherman Brothers, Winnie the Pooh's original Winnie the Pooh songs in this movie, and it's not a musical, so it's not. <laughs> so there's not like moments where Ewan McGregor is suddenly bursting into song like I don't know what to do. What do I do? Who? Who? But there's classic. But the classic, the, but the classic Winnie the Pooh songs from the nineteen seven, from the old nineteen seventies short films are there. From Tigger's theme to the Winnie the to the actual Winnie the Pooh opening number. Do Pooh's this little stretching song? Just, just having them in there it makes the experience feel a little bit more real and. It makes you, it just warms your heart with that nostalgia. You get it in your chest, you just feel it in your chest and in your, like on the verge of tears, like, oh my God, he's still, he's Winnie the Pooh. And every time Jim Cummings starts to, you hear Jim Cummings as Pooh, you almost feel something. And it says something about the writers that they were able to perfectly capture the way that these characters talk. They talk so well and there's such childlike innocence to them that when, and you get Christopher Robin being like a parent, being like a, the absentee parent, being like, I'm a, being like, it's gotta be, I gotta do this. And they're like, the kid, little kids who are like, but why? And that's basically it. The whole, sto the whole story is essentially Christopher Robin, reali the character of Christopher Robin realizing that he needs to, that occasionally, Occasionally, he needs to look at things from a different perspective, the perspective of the characters in the Hundred Acre Wood. And he's a, such, a, and it's a, so, and it starts off very hook-ish. There's a couple things that went, but at the same time, we get, we don't have the moment, that moment, like in Hook, where it's up until the beginning of the third act, or until the end of the second act, when he's like, I'm, it's true. It's not like with Alice in Wonderland or Hook, the Timber and Alice in Wonderland or Hook, where it's like it was real. It wasn't just I'm not dreaming right now. It wasn't a dream in my head this entire time. Because clearly, in this particular version of events, it's making it very clear that Christopher Robin knew that Winnie the Pooh had. Hit. It was always in the back of his mind. It was never pushed out completely. There's, it's never. It's never been in question whether or not Pooh was real. Also, something we probably should have mentioned with the music. There's an original Richard Sherman song at the end of the movie, so stay through the credits a little bit. Yeah. It, there's a, it's a fun little, it's a fun little musical number followed by a quick little final joke. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and we get to, but to see these characters, even if they are played by different actors than they are normally played, Peter Cullen is not playing Eeyore, Brad Garrett is. Although I did love Brad Garrett as Eeyore, he just kind of nails it. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. But Brad, Gar but Brad Garrett has played Eeyore in the past, so this isn't too big a stretch for him. Yeah, and, but in fact, in fact, Eeyore is one of the characters that gets the most screen time out of the Hundred Acre Woods gang. We get very little of Pig We get a little bit of Piglet, a little bit of Tigger, but Pooh obviously has the most of the show, and he kind of steals it for a lot every time he's on screen. Pooh just runs away with the movie at pla in places. Because he, he's just so adorable, and it's Jim Cummings who will never, who again, deserves a freaking Oscar nomination. So, just. I mean, please, Academy, if you're going to start adding completely useless categories, 
just throw a voice actor award in there. I mean, the I Emmys did it. A, the Emmys did it years ago. Granted, it's not during the main ceremony. It's not during the main ceremony, but at the very least, at the very least, they honor. They're still honoring those guys who put in the work. Who put in the work? I mean, well, that's a. I mean, that's a strange place to go in this. This, but. Christopher Robin is a good movie. It's it's not exactly the heartwarming cha- it, game changer that you hope it, that you would hope it would be. It definitely warms your heart. You feel a little tug at your heart. You feel a tug at your heartstrings. Maybe some people, maybe other people feel a little, actually do go all the way to crying. Maybe mean, there's some people out there who are just complete cynical, who are just completely cynical and don't and will just sit there stone faced the entire time. Go, why did I go to? The, why did I pay ten bucks to see this stupid movie? But in the end, it's a nice little distraction from some of the worst stuff that's been going on in the world, whether you like the way the world is, whether you like the way things are or not. And if you do like the way things are, then you are an idiot. Who are you? <laughs> then who are you? Because even, even some of the people who think like the way things are admit that the world is pretty bad, bad right now. Yeah. Also, there might be a little bit of a dig. Also, there might be a little bit of a dig at the way the world things are right now in the movie. I don't think it was the intention, but it's. But it kind but of. I can't, d- but it didn't really seem like it was the intention, but it kind of does. But I think. But that's how you took it, and it could be. It could be how a couple people take it. Yeah, we are not sure, but it's. But it's. But there's something there. There, I don't know. I don't know what it says about the writers or the director or the actor or the crew or anyone. I don't even think it really. Maybe it's not even saying anything, and we're just reading and we're just making a reading out of nothing. Yeah. But anyway, that's it. Yeah. Christopher Robin's good. Go see it if you like. If you like Winnie the Pooh, if you want to have spend a couple, if you want to spend about an hour and a half. This is actually the longest Winnie the Pooh movie in a long time, actually. Yeah. Because most of them are seventy minutes. Anyway. This is probably closer to like. It's probably like an hour and a half, hour forty-five. But but it's a nice distraction. It's not bad. It's not bad, and that it's really good. It's really really good, and yeah. But so uh, I, I think that's it. Yeah. So uh, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and be sure to tune in next time when one more. Fuck Batman. Fuck Batman. Bye.